Hey guys, so I was thinking uh, this past Sunday I did my Save Round Sunday uh, video and uh, one of the things I threw up on the camera as a teaser, so to speak, is I got some new uh, accessories for the motorcycle, sparkles if you will, and uh, that got me to thinking that, you know, at least in the, the KLR 650 community, uh, a lot of guys, and a lot of guys, and me, me somewhat included, um, one of the things we like about the KLR 650 is it's such a simple motorcycle, easy to work on, uh, not any electronics, anything like that. It's all cable, carbureted, the whole nine yards. And uh, a lot of people, this is their first time they've ever bought something that they could actually um, wrench on or, or actually repair or modify, and, and they're not afraid to take it apart. And uh, I, one of the things that has helped me is I've never been afraid to take something apart. I enjoy wrenching on uh, engines and cars and motorcycles and lawn mower to a certain extent now don't get me wrong my frustration level uh, has a trigger point just like anybody else and if it's not if it turns into a super huge project it frustrates me if it doesn't get fixed right away however I was just curious that um, I'm gonna show you some pictures of a project I did years ago back in 2000 and Oh, hell, I guess it was 2001, 2002, around that time frame. And uh, it was a rather big project. It looks a lot bigger than it was when I put these pictures on there. So I'm going to show you pictures of this. And this is one of the biggest projects I've ever tackled as far as um, mechanics go you know, with the vehicle. And, uh, you know, I know some of you um, are mechanically inclined. I know some of you are mechanics by trade. I know some of you are repair techs by trade. There's a lot of things that help us in life fix other things. So this is probably one of the biggest projects I've ever done in my life. And I'd be curious to find out what is the what are the biggest ones that you've ever done. So I, I, I'm trying to remember the photos and I'll throw them up here. I remember doing the work. I'm just going to throw up the pictures here and continue to talk. And hopefully I talk right and get the pictures in the right order. So let's backtrack. So 2001, 2002 time frame, maybe, maybe, yeah, 2000, between 2000 and 2002, this is when I did this. Uh, I was on active duty stationed in Fort Gordon, Georgia, and took two weeks off to finish this. So what happened was I had bought a 1978 Jeep CJ5, and uh, Prior to that, I, when I lived in Arizona and I took it to Alaska with me, I had a 1967 Jeep CJ5, and I really like Jeeps. I, I really do. I just uh, I was doing a lot of off-roading back then when I lived in Arizona, so it made sense to have a, a four-wheel drive vehicle, right? And uh, Jeeps always have a soft spot in my heart, although nowadays they're priced so high, I don't know if I can afford another one. All right, so the Jeep I bought, I paid less than $1,500 for it can imagine the condition it was in so uh, I'll throw up some pictures of how it looks when I bought it right here uh, it was a really oxidized blue paint you can see there was bondo and rust and just deterioration all over the thing and uh, I wanted to replace it and I knew that I could buy a fiberglass tub so the part of a Jeep if you think of a of that type, that year model G, there was only, let me think. Here, I want to name off all the body parts. You got the tub, which consists of the uh, the dash, the cowl, all the way back. Then you got two doors, a top, a hood, two fenders, and a grill. That's it. That is all there is to it. So the tub is actually one big piece. Now I could go to those places like JC Whitney and buy aluminum tubs, metal tubs, unpainted, what, what not. Well, a friend of mine lived out in the country a little bit and he told me he remembered seeing an old Jeep tub out in the field. And he went and talked to the guy, got his phone number for me. He knew the guy, got his phone number and I called him up and it was just sitting out there in the woods. I mean, this Jeep tub it was fiberglass and it was just laying there, wasn't being used for anything. And um, so I called the guy and uh, talked him up, and I think I paid three or four hundred dollars for this new. It's almost like getting a new body for four hundred bucks. So I called him up, went out there, loaded it up in the back of the truck, and brought it home. And uh, as you can see here, it has some cracks on the uh, cowling, which 
Uh, I, I did some fiberglass work there. I bought the fiberglass kit at one of the automotive repair shops, you know, Advanced AutoZone, one of those. Uh, read the instructions, cleaned it up, sanded it down, and patched it myself. It took a while because I can't remember how many layers I put on there, and I sanded it down a little bit. And I'm not a body person, but still, this is something I wanted to do. I had to do it myself because I didn't have the money. And um, so I got that sanded and um, took the old tub apart. I had to cut so much metal off of this old one because the, the mounting spots, the um, the bushings that mounted it on there were all rusted out and just deteriorated so bad. It was just falling apart in pieces. And uh, the nuts were rusted, the bolts were rusted. I had to cut a lot of that stuff out with a, with a cutting wheel. And so I did all that and uh, got the fiberglass done, got the Jeep stripped down to nothing but the frame and the grill. And you can see that here. And uh, it was just a mess. So I cleaned some of it up. I got all the, the grime out of the um, skid plate under the transfer case and all that. And, uh, so I had to make shift, you know, had to jerry rig all kinds of crap to make this thing fit on there. And uh, so I got the new fiberglass tub put on, put the steering wheel back together and the steering column and the brake pedal and the clutch pedal and the gas pedal and all the lines and the wires and the gauges. Had All that had to be transferred into this Jeep this new fiberglass tub and it was a pain I'm not gonna tell you it was not easy doing it in the driveway not a garage a driveway and I only had two weeks of vacation that I had to do it um, as you can see my youngest kid helping me in the one photo trying to put the uh, mounting plate off I had to cut one off the metal tub to fix it to the bottom of the fiberglass tub and uh, once I got it on there and got all the uh, got it to where it was uh, usable got the seats put back in um, I bought a can of, I think it was a gallon can of Herculiner, which is like a bed liner material. It's got little beads of rubber in it, and I painted the entire inside of the tub with that stuff, and, and it cured. And then uh, I got some new tires for it. I put some, uh, I think they were 32-inch Yokohamas, and uh, then, or 33, they were 33-inch Yokohamas. And... Um, there's a lot I did to that Jeep, but this is we're talking about the body part. So yeah, we did all that, and um, I eventually took it to Mako and paid $500 for a paint job, the blue paint job you see here, and bought a new um, top for it and things like that. But uh, that was the biggest project I've ever done. And some of the other things I did to this Jeep, I put a, um, a lift kit on it, which I had to cut the old springs off because the, the bolt that hold the, the back of the, the front part of the spring on was rusted through, it wouldn't turn, so I had to cut the spring, not the bolt, the spring. Um, I put a locker in the rear axle. Um, I had to drill out many of the bolts. Uh, Jeep likes to use Torx screws on everything, and the Torx screws holding the rear diff cover on, there's like a hundred of them back there, it's an AMC 20 rear end. So I had to drill out some of those, and I put hex nuts back in. And, uh, it was just, I had to replace the clutch in it. Uh, so yeah, it was a, a big project. Uh, I still thoroughly enjoyed that Jeep. I did some off-roading there in Georgia, and then we took it up to um, uh, Murphy, North Carolina, actually. There used to be a uh, Teleco ORV park there. I, I think it's shut down now. But it was a huge, huge ORV park. Had, I took it there, and uh, but it was fun. I loved that Jeep, and uh, moved up here. See, George, here's a trick though. Georgia doesn't have safety inspections. And uh, when I moved up here, uh, Virginia has safety inspections and I knew it wasn't gonna pass. I just knew it. So I eventually sold it to a guy in Maryland, drove all the way down here and took it away. And we used the money I sold the Jeep for my son, I bought my son a dirt bike. And that's, that's another story. But that's the biggest project I've ever tackled mechanically. And um, you just can't be afraid. You just gotta get a box of tools and go out there and start taking stuff apart. Buy a manual, uh, you know, for your bike or your car and go to town. But anyway, I'd love to hear it in the description of uh, some of the projects you've tackled. And I can imagine some of them are nothing more than changing your own tire and to rebuilding an engine from bottom to top. So yeah, share your, uh, your uh, stories of the biggest mechanical issue you tackled yourself and how it turned out. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you again soon. Later. I want to take a couple of minutes and thank you. If you watch the video all the way to the end and you're seeing this, I really, really appreciate it. I'll put my email address and my mailing address right over here somewhere. 
And if you have stickers you want to send me, I'd appreciate it. Talk to y'all again soon. Goodbye.